Hey friends of the internet, today we're back with another pandemic topic. Today's topic is toilet paper. As many of you may have experienced in the early parts of the pandemic, uh, people were not able to find toilet paper. We were among those people. Uh, we managed to get by, uh, but we never had a big supply of it. Recently, uh, I was at Target and I was able to buy a large purple package of Cottonelle toilet paper. Cottonelle is the preferred toilet paper of the Yarborough household. Um, at the same time, uh, Amazon showed me that they had a deal on this box of what they referred to as professional toilet paper. I don't really know what professional toilet paper is, I don't know if there are professional butt wipers out there, but this is professional toilet paper. I thought we'd spend a few minutes today talking about how toilet paper is marketed, sold, distributed, consumed, and used. And I thought we would do a compare and contrast between the consumer grade, available everywhere, uh, retail toilet paper, and the buy it over the internet professional toilet paper. So we're gonna take a quick break while I get a roll of each of these out of their respective packaging and we'll pick back up after that. So one of the things I want you to notice is that this large box of professional toilet paper contains 60 rolls and that there are 451 sheets per roll for a total of 3,074 square feet or 286 square meters of toilet paper in the professional. Up here we have the commercial toilet paper and you'll see that there's this really interesting uh, infographic I guess in the upper left corner where it says 24 mega rolls equals 96 regular rolls. So what they're trying to say, I think, and they even have a little picture of one roll equaling four rolls, is that they somehow magically have managed to get four rolls worth of toilet paper onto one standard size roll. This seems like magic to me, or bullshit. I'm not sure which, but we're going to find out. I can tell you that down here they say that there are 282 sheets of two-ply paper per roll. So that's kind of curious. I mean, each roll of the consumer toilet paper has 284 sheets, whereas the professional paper has 451. What's up with that? How, how can one roll of 284 sheet toilet paper be considered four rolls of regular toilet paper when the professional toilet paper has 451 sheets every roll? Additionally, this only represents 717.6 square feet of toilet paper. Now, just to give you some perspective, the toilet paper on the top costs $21 in the purple packaging. The toilet paper down here cost me $42 delivered. So, on a per square foot basis, the uh, Professional toilet paper is a better deal. On a per square basis, if you count your squares when you're wiping, the toilet paper on the bottom is still a better deal. But maybe there's something special other than the packaging uh, about the toilet paper on the top that makes it worth the extra money. And... Uh, Finding out whether that's true or not is what I hope to do today. I hope to look at the two kinds of toilet paper and compare them in as many ways as I, as I can think 
and see, are these a better quality? Is that why I'm paying more for them? I don't know. We're going to find out. So let me open these up and get one out. And we will start our qualitative and quantitative analysis of the toilet paper. One of the theories that was put out by the media and by the toilet paper industry uh, during the shortages was that the toilet paper manufacturers in the United States couldn't make enough consumer toilet paper and that they had such a tight supply chain that what they had made was toilet paper for workplaces, hotels, uh, and other businesses. And that that's why there was such a big toilet paper shortage. And this toilet paper here, the professional toilet paper, when we open it up, we'll see. This toilet paper was meant for the hospitality industry. And it'll be interesting to see how the quality is different between the hospitality industry toilet paper and the home use toilet paper. So when you open the big box of professional toilet paper, what you find is that each of the 60 rolls of toilet paper that's contained inside is wrapped in paper. So this is one roll of professional toilet paper. So when you rip open the plastic retail packaging for the retail toilet paper, you discover that every six rolls of toilet paper are again wrapped in plastic. So from an environmental standpoint, uh, the plastic wrapped retail toilet paper is maybe not such a good idea. I can tell you already that these mega rolls do indeed look a little bit bigger than these professional rolls. But we're going to get one of each out and we'll continue our investigation. So on the left we have one roll of the retail toilet paper and on the right we have one roll of the professional industrial toilet paper. And I can tell you already that the retail toilet paper looks to be plusher and softer. The professional industrial toilet paper does appear to be a bit thinner. Uh, it's smoother I would say, not as much texture, and a, a little bit thinner. Uh, but at any rate, what we need to do is we need to find out how much toilet paper did we really buy in each of these products. My wife asked me when I was telling her that I was going to make this video, you know, you're going to have to unroll a whole roll of toilet paper and count the squares to determine which really is more toilet paper. To which I say, no, I'm not going to unroll one and I'm not going to count rolls of uh, sheets of toilet paper. Uh, I have a better solution to figure out which is more toilet paper. So rather than counting squares of toilet paper, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that toilet paper has relatively the same specific gravity uh, regardless of which uh, format it's in. And we're going to weigh each roll. And this will tell us how much paper we bought. So uh, the first roll, we'll, we'll start with the professional roll. And we see that the professional roll weighs 156 grams. So that's 156 grams to get 451 sheets of toilet paper. Now for the retail, 134 grams. What we can say is that the professional industrial toilet paper is a little bit heavier. The roll is not as big around, but it is a little bit wider than the uh, retail toilet paper. So now we're going to have to continue our investigation. What, what we can say at this point is you are getting more toilet paper here than you are here. Uh, if we believe the square counts and the square footage, you're getting 
considerably more toilet paper here for your money uh, than you are here. Now we need to evaluate the quality of the actual toilet paper. Okay, so we're going to do our first quality test. In this hand, I have five squares of the industrial, professional, whatever the hell you want to call it, toilet paper. And in this hand, I have five squares of the retail toilet paper. And I'm going to rub them on my face and determine which feels better, which feels softer. Now, I hear some of you saying, but Andrew, you don't normally rub toilet paper on your face. You normally rub toilet paper. Any rate, I don't think that the YouTube algorithm would like it if I gave you an actual demonstration of how these products are used. Uh, so we're going to use my face as a, a analog for you know where. Okay, here we go. So here's the professional. Uh, I've got my five squares. I can tell you it is pretty thin. Um, I don't know if you can see through it at all, but it's pretty thin. So I'm just going to wad it up like we were doing, you know, the thing. And uh, I'm going to roll it on my face. Oh, okay. Don't forget the nose. Nose is very sensitive. Lips. I know you're not supposed to touch your face right now. Too bad. I washed my hands and I'm all clean. My germs are my germs. Um, okay, well, it's certainly not rough. I would say smooth. I don't know that it would have much abrasive action, if you know what I mean. But, uh, Professional toilet paper seems just fine. Let's try the uh, retail toilet paper. I can tell you right now that the retail toilet paper feels considerably more substantial with the same five squares. And uh, I, I don't know whether this thing will focus or not, but you can see it's got some ridges on it and that probably gives it some good abrasive action. What the better for uh, you know, cleaning. Uh, let's see how it feels on our face. Okay, more ASMR here. Uh -huh. Don't forget the nose. The nose is very sensitive. Lips. Mm. Touching, touching, touching. I bet you haven't seen content like this before. And certainly not during the pandemic. Oh, you just want to see me touch my face? Okay. This is me touching my face. This is me touching my face with toilet paper. Which is more exciting. Okay. So, uh, in my opinion, this is actually softer, smoother on my skin. This is the professional toilet paper. This is a little bit more abrasive. Uh, but if I had to pick just one of these to get the job done, the retail toilet paper definitely wins on this score. On to our next quality metric. In some of the reviews that I read on Amazon for this professional toilet paper, uh, people, in addition to mentioning that it was thin, mentioned that the squares don't tear easily at the perforations. And I think we've all been there you go to uh, a public establishment and you, you go in and you go to get some toilet paper and you go to pull it off the roll and it rips unevenly. And if you're OCD and, you know, you really wanted seven squares because you're a seven square kind of guy, uh, it irritates you that it didn't tear along the perforation line. So th th this next test is pretty simple. I'm just going to tear... Uh, the toilet paper off the roll and we're going to see does it tear cleanly along the perforations here we go uh, uh. the answer is no the answer is that it tore cleanly along one ply the outer ply 
but that the inner fly, first of all, they came apart. I didn't have to do anything to do this. They just came apart. And uh, as you can see, it didn't, it didn't tear cleanly for the inner layer of the two flies. We're gonna try the same test with the commercial toilet paper. So we're just gonna unroll some. A section. I'm gonna just hold it and I'm gonna pull. Oh. Look at that. The retail side of the paper perforation tears much more cleanly. And it leads me to believe that the overall tensile strength of the toilet paper from Target uh, is substantially more. Now, I had thought about trying to find a way to uh, demonstrate the tensile strength of each toilet paper, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. It, 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 could, it could be done, but it's a pain in the rear end, and we're already talking about toilet paper, so we're not going to do that. We are going to do one last test. Okay, so for our last test, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out which of these two toilet papers is more absorbent. I think I know the answer, but I think we need to find out. And we need to find out by how much. Because the two uses, the two traditional uses for toilet paper are the scrubbing, you know, and uh, the absorbing. So I gave you my analysis of the scrubbing ability of these toilet papers. But now we're going to figure out which is more absorbent. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to weigh the toilet paper and we're going to weigh a small bowl with water in it. And then we're going to put the toilet paper in the water and we're going to let it soak up as much water as it can. Then I'm going to drain off any excess water and re-weigh it and we'll figure out how much water it is able to absorb. And you guys at home can just add some yellow food coloring in your mind to this water to figure out what this might also be, you know? Okay, good. Okay, so retail toilet paper, the expensive stuff, the good stuff. 10 sheets weigh four grams, according to this scale. The scale doesn't give tenths of grams, so just four grams. <clears throat> and the combination of the bowl and the toilet paper and the water are 502 grams. So we're going to stick this uh, 10 sheets, tore very easily by the way, uh, in the water. It's still, it's still absorbing, can you see? I may have screwed this up, but I may not have put enough water in there. Okay, let's see. No, we're okay, we're okay. Let me go pour off any excess water. So, <laughs> it was very close. Um, it now weighs 500 grams. So it was able to absorb all but two grams of the water. And so when we take this out, it's now 458 minus the four grams for the toilet paper itself. Uh, it was able to absorb uh, 46 grams of water. Great. That's disgusting. Okay. Uh, here's the uh, here's the professional toilet paper. We have a little problem. The professional toilet paper does not even weigh a gram, uh, at least according to my scale, which is a bad sign. Uh, we're going to round up and say this is one gram, uh, but. The other clearly read four grams. 
and then the toilet paper with the water in this case is 522 grams so we're gonna do the same procedure we're gonna take our 10 sheets of professional toilet paper and we're gonna drop it in the water and let it soak up all the water it can uh, we can see it's uh, not doing nearly as good a job uh, there's quite a bit that we're going to drain off here okay so let's weigh the sludge I don't know if you can see that but the sludge weighs 490 grams minus one gram for the what was toilet paper now is sludge uh, gives us uh, 4.89 and when we tear it out we just weigh the bowl by itself get 4.58 4.89 that's gonna be 29 grams so the retail toilet paper definitely more absorbent Definitely stronger when wet, um, but you get a lot less of it. So it's true that the professional toilet paper, you get a lot more squares, you get a lot more surface area. It's thinner, it doesn't hold together nearly as well when it gets wet. Um, it comes in a more ecological packaging, which is somewhat frustrating for me because I would have liked for the professional toilet paper to do just as well as the commercial toilet paper. But I don't really think it did. In answer to questions I asked or maybe didn't ask, maybe you're asking, I don't know, uh, which should you buy, which would I buy again? The answer is I'll buy whatever I can find in these times because it's hard to find still. Um, and I'll use both. They're, they're both going to get used. Um, but I think that, you know, if money were, is no object and availability is no object, I think I still do prefer the uh, store-bought uh, Cottonelle brand. Uh, so there you have it. Some interesting thoughts and experiments with toilet paper in the time of Corona. Hope you all are doing really well and that you're keeping your backside clean.